So hello, I'm Amy and tonight we're going to have a bit of a look at patience and what the Bible tells us about how to be patient in challenging times. I'm not sure about all of you, but I'm not a naturally patient person and I'm sure my family would readily tell you this. I like things to be organised, efficient and productive. But there are so many times where this can't happen and I'm sure we could all rattle off a hundred examples. When we're stuck in traffic and a tolerable 20 minute commute becomes an excruciating 90 minute snail scroll. When we're anxiously waiting for test results and a few days feels like a few years. When we've been advised to physically distance from our social networks and communities and the days keep getting longer and longer. And that's when we hit with my mother's favourite line, be patient. A favourite amongst parents everywhere. So I work as a speech pathologist mainly with preschool age children. And I'm sure those of you who are familiar with children would understand that the patients do not come naturally to these small people. I think every family I work with has at some point asked to work on their child's patience. They want their kids to learn to wait, to know there's a reason their requests aren't immediately fulfilled, to understand that their parents aren't just being mean when their request for ice cream for breakfast is denied. <laughs> And this makes me reflect on my relationship with God sometimes. We keep making requests and waiting expectantly for them to be fulfilled. We don't understand why things aren't happening any faster. With my family, we work on the concept of waiting and of trust. So building the child's trust that they will eventually have their requests fulfilled. Trust that their parents can see the bigger picture. That they are being punished just because they've been told no. And this is often what patience comes down to, trusting that there is a long-term plan, trusting that someone else knows our needs and will provide with us what we require, trusting that someone is with us each step of the way. In order to have patience, we need to trust and accept that God has a plan for us. So how do we build patience? We practice. Much like weightlifting, running or cake decorating, we can't just put our runners on and expect to run a marathon. We need to practice patience. There's a great book called Strength of Will, written around 1915, that suggests we can teach ourselves patience by repeatedly completing annoying or tedious tasks. One suggestion is to get a 50 coins on the floor and then pick them up one by one, placing each coin into a neat stack. You repeat this every day, increasing the number of coins each day. And through these repeated trials, you will learn patience. Not sure about any of you, but this is how I feel at the minute. Staying inside day after day, each day feeling a little longer than the last, each day needing a little bit more patience to get through, getting a bit more tiring. And it's in these times that we are practicing patience. There are many, many mentions of patience and perseverance in the Bible, but let's have a look at James 5. So if you have a Bible app, uh, website or a paper Bible, um, feel free to turn to James 5, 7 and read along. Or Hugh has just posted in the chat. Thank you, Hugh. So give you a few seconds to pull that up. So James 5, 7 says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crops patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance, and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. In verse 7, James talks about a farmer waiting for rains essential for softening fields for ploughing and then again for maturing crops for harvest. Now, I've never been much of a gardener. <clears throat> so a few months ago, I went out to Bunnings and I came home armed with seedlings, pots, fertiliser, everything I needed to grow my own veggies. I planted my little balcony garden. I watered the plants, fed them, moved them around to get the right amount of sun, and I waited for my garden to grow. And I waited. And I waited. <laughs> Unfortunately, tomatoes don't grow in a week. 
and especially if you plant them in autumn. I can't make my plants grow any faster by will alone. It's outside my control. And this is true for so many things in our lives. At the minute, we can't go out and socialise. We can't go and see our friends and our families. But this is outside of our control. Like the farmer waiting for the rains, there is nothing we can do to bring it about any faster. But James tells us that we shouldn't lose heart, shouldn't lose faith that change will come, that God will provide, and in time, the rains will come and the crops will flourish. James talks in verse 11 of Job's perseverance, and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the story of Job. So he was described as blameless and upright and the greatest man amongst all the people of the East. And yet Job experienced indescribable suffering. He loses his family, his health, his livelihood. He loses everything. So the word used for Job in the Bible is hupomone, from hupo, which means under, and meno, to stay or remain. But the literal meaning is to abide under. But it's usually translated as patience or endurance. However, this isn't a passive patience. It's someone not swaying from their purpose and faith by even the greatest of trials and suffering. William Barclay writes that there may be a faith which never complained or questioned, but still greater is the faith which was brought by questions and still believed. And Job did not just be calmly waiting for things to blow over. At times, he was anything but calm. We see how bitterly angry he felt about the injustice. He was angry, he was upset, he was mad. He lamented to God. He agonises over what he must have done to deserve. He questioned, he pleaded, begged God to end his suffering. And yet through all of this, he praised God. He never lost his faith. After speaking with God, in verse 42, Job says, Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. We often have questions for God. And so often it's hard to be patient because we don't understand. We can't see the bigger picture. We don't have to understand his reasoning to trust God. We just have to understand that throughout our suffering, throughout the challenges, God is listening and he is there. But there are things that lay too wonderful for us to know. And it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be angry. And it's okay to share these feelings with God. A nice illustration of how we can pray, pray in difficult times is in Colossians 1, 9 to 12. So I'll give you a second to pull that up or follow along in the chat. So Paul writes, Colossians 1, 9. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. So Paul highlights the importance of regular prayer of constant communication with God, asking to be filled with the knowledge of his will and using this to grow in the knowledge of God. Because we don't have to have all the answers. We just need to be strong in the knowledge that God does. Second Peter 3 tells us, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. But God calls us to be patient and to show perseverance but not in our own strength, but through his, because he will strengthen us during the difficult times. He has already given us the patience and the endurance to push through the challenges and emerge stronger on the other side. So unfortunately, there's no magic trick to being more patient. <laughs> Having patience is easy when things are going well, but so much harder when things are tough. And it comes down to some seemingly simple things, accepting that what we can and can't control knowing that we can't grow our tomatoes any faster, but know that God is in control. Trust that though we don't have the whole picture, God is there throughout it. Philippians 4.6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And that is how we can endure the challenges with patience and perseverance, through prayer, humbly bringing our questions, concerns and challenges to God, praising God for the triumphs, but also through challenges. So let's pray. Hey God, <clears throat> thank you for being there with us. Thank you for your unmoving presence during our darkest hours. Thank you for holding us in the times when we feel things falling away. I pray that in the challenges we face this week, you are there. I pray that we might feel your presence, be comforted by your wisdom, and be safe in your care. Let us remember that it is through your power, not our own, that we make it through the trials. I pray that as we move through the week, you would renew our strength, revive our spirits, and re-energise our bodies and minds. In your name we pray. Amen. And I will hand